Alright everybody, welcome back. It is your pal Al, and today we are going to be starting a new game. We're going to be playing Alone in the Dark. Uh, this is a complete remake of the 1992 uh, classic, Alone in the Dark. This game, the original game, was one of the first to set the standard in what survival horror has become today. Uh, this is one of my most anticipated games of 2024, uh, so I hope it's good. I've heard some good things online, I've heard some negatives, um, you know, a lot of quality items about this, including story and graphics, but I've heard it's not the longest game in the world. I've also heard there is a, like, Claire Leon situation where you can play through as either Emily or David's characters, depending, uh, but I don't know much about it. So with that, I'm super excited to play this game. Love you guys, and let's get this. So I think for this first run through, I'm gonna play on standard difficulty and modern mode. So, your uncle, what's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him, watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. But Jeremy didn't kill himself. Is that why he's at your setup? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis. Figuring you might stumble upon some cure. You mentioned the letter. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to get him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Here we are. My uncle's not well, Mr. Carnby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part in this? You couldn't get a cab? I just... wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What exactly are we going to do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first. All right, guys, this is the first major decision we have to make. Uh, we can play as Emily Hartwood, played by Jodie Cormer. Uh, great actress. Been in a lot of stuff. Um, and Edward... Uh, Carnby, played by David Harbour. Um, and I will tell you, uh, both these guys are great actors, actresses, so voice acting is going to be great. Uh, it's supposed to be like a Leon Kennedy-Claire situation where whatever you miss the first time, you can go back and get a second time. 
and they're uh, slightly the same, but there are differences. Let's start out with uh, playing as Edward Carnby. I mean, he's the detective and he's got a gun. <laughs> the second time through, we'll go uh, play as Emily. looks abandoned. It can't be. There has to be someone around. Wait here. I'll go around back. And we're splitting up already. That's good. Alright, here we go. Chapter 1. Alone in the Dark. Oh, and we are playing. Let's see, no flashlight. Um, oh shoot, what was that? Was that a dodge mechanic? Okay, there's duck. I'm trying to figure out uh, how to interact with things. The mechanics, there's a nice engine hanging around there. Let's run. Oh, here we go. Nav point. Now what do we got here? Oh shoot, that's handy. A little flashlight. Flashlight. Oh, it's a clue. And a kitchen garden key. Nice. Oh, okay. So far these controls kind of mimic Resident Evil or what you'd find in a lot of third person survival horror games, which is good. With the one exception, triangle is duck, and that is dodge. I'm playing on PS5, in case anyone is wondering. Huh. Interesting. that kitchen garden key let's use it <clears throat> excuse me oh what do you want bets cat do not want to shoot the cat hey pistol bullets supplies got a few bullets which is good hey kitty kitty wait where'd the cat go Oh, the cat just, like, disappeared. That's, that's fun. What do we got here? Oh, here we go. Oh, my God. Well, so far, the game is really pretty. Nah, I'm not <clears throat> getting in there. All right, so we're going to need a bolt cutter or something for that. The nice thing is you can see, like, nav points for, inter well, not nav points, but, like, interaction cue points, so... Shouldn't miss anything. It's supposed to be found, anyways. Hmm. What is that? We're gonna need something to fish that out, I'm sure. This reminds me of Resident Evil 8 Biohazard. Um, the area with the trailer where you go out uh, when you finally get out of the house, the Baker house. Um, because, like, there's the area up here where you can walk around, and... I mean, obviously, two very different games, but... Okay, doesn't look like there's anything else here. Nice. Dang, that's a big-ass tree. I would venture to guess... Yeah, no kidding. I would venture to guess that's probably important. Okay, is it me or is that tree whispering? What? Yeah, we're getting away from that tree. Housekeeper's key. All right. Um, let's 
go look up here real quick. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, a health drink. Nice. Doesn't look like we can go through any of these doors. Not yet, anyways. We we'll probably need some bolt cutters or something. Let's go down here. So far, the graphics in this game are pretty cool. Um, hear stuff clunking around. The audio is pretty good so far, but um, don't mind if I do. I've got headphones on. It makes a big difference, especially in horror games. You got to play like with, with headphones on if you're playing any kind of horror or survival horror game. Whoa, what's in here? All right. What did I just pick up? A bullet? A bullet or two? Family Bible. It's a clue. Every day your silence weighs a little heavier. It's been a difficult year for everyone and many have lost all hope. I read in the papers about people suffering. Pictures of dust-covered landscapes without a drop of water. I wish I knew if you were still tending the earth or if you had turned your back against us. I have started to look for help elsewhere. I pray you will tell me if I am going down a path that you find disagreeable. With help from Batiste and Charlotte, I have found comfort in the practice of the voodoo. I have long been skeptical of that Caribbean cult, but it's been of good use to me. It seems all harmless in my book. I say some words dreamt up by the Creoles, and I carry around a small pocket of gris, gris Nothing of this is mentioned in the Bible, of course, but the French quarter priestess tells me it's all connected. She says the Christian God is just one more perspective on the creator of things. That's what I like to think, but the other way around, that the spirits of her faith are just aspects of you, our Heavenly Father. I am so grateful for the words you gave Mr. Hartwood. We will sing your praises at St. John's Eve. The world will be blessed soon again. Only the sacrifices of the Old Testament compare to your demands. Let it be the truth. A mother of earth wood and dirt a mother of a thousand young sacred sand one dollar black cat oil dollar fifty devil shoe strings a quarter that makes two dollars and seventy five cents madam what was that you were telling the doctor a goat without horns what does that mean ah uh, you must have misheard me madam i said no such thing Please, I know I don't look like any of you, but I'm devout. I'm ready to do what it takes. Mm, do not be so eager to sacrifice the few things you have left, madam. Now please, leave my store. A goat without horns. So, okay. So obviously somebody is into voodoo. Uh, I think this is supposed to be kind of a period piece, 1920s. Um, we're obviously in Louisiana. They're talking about Creole and voodoo, uh, Grigri. Um, and they said something about Batiste and Charlotte and a cult. That's what I got out of that anyways. There's a lot going on in there. It's kind of cool that they have good voice acting in this game though. And I don't have to read all that to you guys. They have actors that do it way better than I'm going to. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Let's get this big ass butcher knife. No, no, he doesn't want it. Is there nothing you want off these shelves, man? Um, full. Okay, so we got some health over here. That 
that's it, huh? Interesting. Here's something. Oh, some bullets. Man, you can hear somebody thumping around. A couple more bullets. Wait, was there something in there? Yeah, some bullets. <clears throat> well, so far we've been picking up quite a bit of health and bullets. Nope, nothing in there. Nope, nothing in there. Huh. <clears throat> Alright. Man, there's all kinds of stuff going on down here. Oh, a dungeon. Oh my god. What a lovely room of death. I didn't expect that to be open. I figured it'd be locked. Uh, I'm, aren't I trying to get to the front door? Isn't that my objective? Get to the front door. I need the key. Okay, wine cellar is locked. That's smart. Nothing, huh? Hmm. There's like nothing down here. Nothing helpful, anyways. this sabotage a clue a clue please do not touch the boiler it is working after all while the <coughs> sabotage has caused a leak only the decorative plate has been completely ruined let's wait for mr chance to turn up and he can take a look at the leak mr waits all right sabotage a clue uh sounds That's like a puzzle Oh, it is a puzzle. And we'll have to... You know what that looks like? It looks like that piece that was in that bucket out in the garden. Yeah, for trying to get to the front door, we're going all over the place. Uh, let's look in here. Okay, that's jammed shut. Ooh, a bathroom. You know, after layers of fear, I don't trust bathrooms. It's a purse. What's in here? Oh, here we go. That's creepy. Lottie's Diary. Sunday, June 22nd. I spent all day looking for Jeremy. I should have cared for the others, but I'm scared that he will do something irreversible. Cassandra is upset that I didn't give her the latest shipment of pain medication that Waits brought from the post office yesterday. I would have given it to her, but the company didn't send a new key this time around, so the box is just sitting there on my desk. They must have figured we had plenty of their gimmicky keys by now. I only remember seeing one lately. Grace was playing with it inside the grand parlor. Unless it turns up by itself, it will have to wait. I have to figure out where Jeremy is. I think Jack knew something. That dog of his found a strange rot permeating the house. She's showing us, he said. Like those blots and streaks of fetid rot was talking to him. Okay, so when we need pain medication, uh, there's a key inside the grand parlor. So I don't know if that's health or what. Okay, there's a little bit of health in there. Man, there, I, we're going to probably have to come back to the, Oh, yeah, there's the locked medicine box. Perfect. We got a map. 
Falcon Grand Parlor. Okay, cool. It's jammed shut right now, but I'm okay. sure we'll make our way there. Piazza Key. Okay. Death. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at all the puzzles. Oh, wow. Can I get in here? Hmm. Nope. I need the key. Um, before we leave this hallway, let's see what else we can get into. It's wedged shut. Okay, which means this is probably shut too. Mm, looks important. Private, no entry. Yeah, I'd say. At least now it's on the map. Yeah, see, we got it on the map. One of them wedged shut, which means it can probably only be open from the other side. And then one just needs a key, which they're keeping us out of there for now. So later on, we're going to have to come back through here. Hmm, interesting. Ooh, I didn't like how that lo looked. I don't like that big ass grizzly bear there. I need the key. That's the piazza that we were just talking about. Okay. What's in here? Hmm. I need the key. Oh, that's gonna get old. Hmm. I need the key every time. Oh, that purse looks the same as the other purse. Come on, guys. You're better than that. The Great Depression. President Hoover raises tariffs on over 20,000 imported goods in an act to protect American labor. Following the collapse of the Wall Street stock market on October 24 last year, American industry has suffered greatly. Thousands of companies have gone bankrupt and left a large part of the American workforce unemployed. In an attempt to turn the tide, the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act has been signed by President Herbert Hoover. By regulating commerce with foreign countries, the government hopes to encourage the industries of the United States to compete with cheap foreign imports. Superstition on rise. New Orleans voodoo stores and spiritual mediums see increased profit during troubled times. While the market has faced hard times ever since Black Thursday of last year, voodoo doctors and snake charmers see significant rise in number of customers. With the coming eve of St. John on the 23rd, the police expect increased cult activity around Bayou St. John, the southern shore of Lake Pontchartrain. Voodoo rituals in that area on the eve of St. John have a long tradition reaching back to the first snake worshippers brought as slaves from West Africa. During the 19th century, its practice was popularized by the legendary Marie Laveau, and has since been embraced by many of the Creoles and the surviving aristocracy of the French Quarter. Author Seeks Asylum Rumors regarding author Cassandra Beauregard making Dorsetto her home verified. Dorsetto Hospital is an old plantation building on the eastern shores of Lake Pontchartrain. While often considered an asylum for the insane, residing Dr. Elmore Lee Gray prefers to think of it as a convalescent home, a place where you can go to rest. The patient list is kept secret, but thought to include many of the black sheep of wealthy families, because at Dosetto, treatment does not come for free. Local author Cassandra Beauregard has now been confirmed by her own admission. She's been lauded as a powerful Creole voice and written many successful books. Lately it was reported from Hollywood that she has finished a moving picture manuscript titled Slaughter Gulch. That film is set to hit the theaters next year. Okay, so I knew this was a period piece. Um, the stock market crash of 1929 is what started the Great Depression. It was uh, October 29th, 1929, I think. 
but anyways that's that's the time period we're in is like right after that or right around there obviously depending on how old that paper is so we're in louisiana okay. in the 20s and the great depression pretty much lasted until world war ii when we went to uh, that looks like it's got something going on it when we went to war uh, and it boosted the economy because war is good for the economy it's, it's terrible for everything else but you know Whoa, pardon me, excuse me. My name is Edward Carnby, private investigator. I hope you don't mind we let ourselves inside. I do mind. This is private property. You can't just barge in here. I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. It's urgent, and no one was answering the door. We can't hear you knocking anymore. None of us can. Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy. Am I right? She has that Hartwood gloom, doesn't she? That's right. I'm Emily Hartwood. I just came to make sure my uncle is all right. Well, he is unavailable right now. He will have to come back another day. Unavailable how? Is he sleeping? We can wait. He's lost. Don't I know you from somewhere? Who's your man again, Miss Hartwood? My name's Edward Carnby, private investigator. Splendid. Enough, all of you, get back to your rooms. McCarthy, keep your eyes on the child. And you two, please leave immediately. Look, we're not here to cause any trouble. Just let us see the old man, satisfy the curiosity of my client here, and we'll be off. Jeremy has gone missing. There's no need to worry, but it might be some time before he turns up. The whole staff is looking for him. What? He ran off? I don't have time for any of this. Please, come back tomorrow. All right, in that case, we'll just wait in his room. You don't mind, do you? It's upstairs, right? Wait, you can't. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. In the corridor, it's the first door on your left. I'll tell Dr. Gray you're here. Excellent, thank you, madam. Look around. See if we can pick up any clues. Oh my god. So now we're looking around for some clues. Let's see what we can find. Locked steamer trunk. Okay. At least he didn't tell us we need another key. Um. Oh, here we go. Lock box. Okay. Oh my god. Look at these sculptures. Jesus. That's creepy. Um, commonplace book. Every night the dark man stands opaque at the threshold of my room, counting the days until my spirit spills out of my tired shape. Only his pallid mask shelters my remaining sanity, staring directly into the face of that demonic sultan would surely sunder time itself. Would he have looked the same to my father as he struggled for his life? Does his veiled face haunt my niece quite the same way? I wish so that I could rest my soul in that sunburnt convent of Tarawaya. Would I find you there, Juan? Or Senora Perosi? Back from the beyond. Every night I hide from him, moving from one misshapen memory to another. Scenes conjured out of fantasy and delirium. Places I struggle to even paint. I wish I understood your death, Signora. Is there anything I could do for you but bury you in that bleak necropolis? 
that triumphant chapel rising above the ledges and the oven vaults shall be your sepulcher where you may rest and I shall weep. There we go. There's So far there's a lot of text, but we'll see. Paint and tile. There we go. I know um, these are very story and narrative driven. Hold on a second. I want to do this real quick. What's this? Uh, there we go. Oh, wait. Hold on. Boom. Hey, you know anything about this? Looks like some sort of talisman. No, I don't. Oh, help me out here, will you? I would kill the guy, throw some of this stuff out. I'd be crazy too if I had this much junk lying around. save this one. All right, come on. I want to go see Dr. Gray. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I'm coming. Miss Hartwood. Emily? different location now <laughs> um all right guys i think this is a good spot to end the uh, very first video uh this is chapter one of alone in the dark your pal al love you guys and i will see you in the next video